My name is Vincent Everts, Trend Watcher, and Vinay Gupta is going to be our ending speaker at the Blockchain Innovation Conference next week, June the 7th. And Vinay, I asked you to come up with an idea for the next 10 years. How is blockchain going to influence our life? What aspects are important uh, for that uh, for that thing? That is your goal for next. Uh, that's the goal for your next talk. Can you first tell me a little bit about uh, what your background is and how you got into these different kinds of versions of uh, of the blockchain? Well, I mean, like yourself, I'm a futurist. Uh, although my original background is technology, uh, I spent many, many, many years in the futures business, um, mostly inside of a kind of defense setting. Um, so, you know, this kind of forecasting work is very much second nature. That's kind of what we do. Mm -hmm. um, but my background in tech, uh, you know, I was part of the 1990s wave of uh, cryptography exploration. And, you know, I spent an enormous amount of time in the field really looking at these things. And so for me, we're living in the future, right? The, the world that we're in now mm -hmm. is the world that we all predicted would happen one day, far, far, far in the future, in the 90s when we were developing these technologies originally. Yeah. This is the world that we are envisaged to happen. Yeah. So we're already in the future. Or in the future, which we already predicted, and I read about you know when you when you were really into the Bitcoin world too, and already in 2014 you were criticizing uh, the the blockchain governance system, and then in 2015 you started with Ethereum, and now you're starting, and then the smart contracts came up, and now you're you're yeah. totally involved into the the system of getting the smart contracts more in an, uh, on a legal footage. I mean, can you tell yeah. me a little <laughs> bit about what that company does? Sure. Um, so. I mean, the, about 2015, I did a couple of talks for the Ethereum Foundation, um, specifically on crowdfunding on blockchains, talking about how this is going to be an enormous, you know, world-changing, multi-trillion industry, and that all completely presages the entire ICO thing. Uh -huh. uh, now what I'm mainly working on is the problem of handling what we call fiat assets on chain. So fiat assets are assets which aren't defined by cryptography, they're assets which are defined by law. And the world has something on the order of $700 trillion worth of assets, which are fiat assets. The question is, how do we get those fiat assets and make them accessible and on chain? One second. What is fiat assets? Are those you know, bricks and, and, and manufacturing plants or, build, or companies, or what are they? So a fiat asset is any asset which is defined by law rather than defined by crypto. Mm -hmm. So it's all the stocks, all the shares, all the land, all the companies, all the physical property, Yep. Anything where if something goes wrong, you can go to a court, that's a fiat asset. Yeah. So Dave, um, Dave Birch is starting the conference talking about the $10 trillion opportunity where basically all these assets are going to be tokenized. That's what mm -hmm. the beginning of the conference, and you that's also what you're working on to make that to put make that system in place. Well, I mean, you know, Dave is a very big vision kind of guy, right? He's going to talk about things at a truly epic scale. A lot of what we're doing is basically watchmaking, right? It's very precise, very technical work to take specific assets and make those specific assets fully tradable and tracked on chain. Yeah. And, and we mostly do that for the companies, right? We're not out there prospecting for kinds of property that we can put on chain. We're there basically uh, catching the problems which are caused by other people doing it, right? Yeah. If somebody decides you're going to start some company that's going to put a particular asset class on chain, Right at the bottom of that, there'll be this point where you need an extremely precise legal mechanism design in uh, with enforceability, with smart contract programming, with all that stuff. And that's the part of the puzzle that we do. Okay, so that's what you're doing. Now, that I, that I challenge you, hey, the next big thing, the next 10 years, how will blockchain influence our life? What then goes through your head? I mean, you have to write already the speech, but I mean, what... And then in 20 minutes, an impossible thing. I would much rather give you two hours, but 20 minutes. What, what is your thinking? Well, I mean, the core question is, does the Western uh, global order collapse? Right? Oh, is does, that America, does America implode? Does the European Union break up? And if it does, does the power shift to the Chinese? Or does the power shift to the global level, essentially to the Internet? So you have this kind of possibility that we're going to lose the current structure that we have because the institutions that we built after World War II are collapsing. They just don't hold together anymore. And then the question is, do we wind up with an alternate global hegemon, which is China, or do we wind up with a transfer of the machinery of trade to the global level, 
where it's maintained by institutions which have the same kind of global mandate as the UN, but are not parts of the UN. Okay, right? so that's this basically the, old, the good old nation state, the end of the good old nation state, which has been predicted many times. And do you think that... Well, that no, no, it's, it's more subtle than that, right? It's not about the end of the nation state, but right now, the nation state, which is America, the American nation state, does the majority of the global government. So the question is, do you wind up with a single nation state which does most of the global governance, or do you wind up with the global governance being run at truly global level? I don't think the nation state is going to cease to be effective at the national level. The question is, does the nation state continue to exert disproportionate influence at the global level? Okay, and what's the role of blockchain in, in that big, huge collapse uh, scenario? Well, the blockchain is a globalist technology. So... If the blockchain continues to be more and more and more useful and more and more and more powerful, it will run into direct conflict with the American government. And you can already see this happening, with, for example, the ICO markets. Mm -hmm. That's two different models of globalization running into each other. Here's the blockchain model of globalization. Here's the American model of globalization. They run into each other. So one way or the other, there's going to be a conflict between blockchain style globalization and nation state style globalization. The question then is, it, does the blockchain get to expand into a power vacuum because the nation states are ineffective at the global level? Or does the nation state and the blockchain have this continuous grinding to see who gets control of the global society? Okay. It's going to be a really exciting talk. You guys are going to have to strap it. Okay. Big ideas. Next 10 years. See you there in Utrecht next week, 7th of June. Thank you very much, Vinny. Splendid. Take care. Okay, good. Uh, I've got to get on to this next call. Nice talking to you, man. Yes, I'm going to stop. Thank you very much. That was wonderful. Okay. Take care. Have fun. See and you soon. Have, Sorry. Take I'm, so now long going to talk, I'm now going to talk to that Indian guy. You know, this, he's now at oh, 4 o'clock. Yeah. But you will, uh, you will like a couple of really interesting speakers. Bye. Good, good. Take care. Have fun. Oh, um, I'm going to bring along one of my team as well, so I've got an assistant with me. Oh, my God. How are we going to do with that? Yeah. I just wanted to let you know early. See you soon. Bye.